Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. This week is a big week, of course, in the NFL because, of course, the schedule is being dripped out bit by bit. This morning we found out about the Titans going to Buffalo and the Vikings going to uh, the Eagles to start the season. And the Eagles, of course, have already decided they're winning the division. It's their division to lose, of course, and so on. And, of course, the talking heads have been talking about that as well. You know, I'll have more on that later on because, you know, we, we hear this every off season. We hear this every off season, but be that as it may news on the Dallas Cowboys. Um, this week is big because we have a rookie mini camp, uh, the 13th through the 15th. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They will get their first taste of being a Dallas Cowboy player. Uh, important dates for, of course, the off season with the collective bargaining agreement, the new agreement that went in. Um, a lot of this stuff has changed and evolved a little bit differently than it used to be. There's less work on the field than there used to be. Of course, there's no contacts. You'll remember last year, the Dallas Cowboys actually got fined and lost in OTA practice because they were too physical in practice. So there's no contact in there. Uh, they can be out on the field running and learning plays and things like that, but no contact. Um, important dates, like I said, the rookie mini camp is the 13th through the 15th. Uh, OTAs. Uh, for the team, 24th through 25th, uh, June 1st and 2nd, June 6th and June 7th, and June 9th and 10th. And mandatory mini camp will be June 14th through 16th. The great thing for the Dallas Cowboys is they have 100% participation. And we're expecting, of course, the same thing for the rookie uh, OTAs as well. Um, interesting thing is there will be some veterans that will be part of this which is good um alex uh isaac alacon you remember of course one of the darlings from hard knocks uh safety tyler cole defensive lineman austin fabaru uh offensive lineman braylon jones kicker chris nagar wide receiver brandon smith and wide receiver T.J. Vasher. Now, what we have, of course, is our nine uh, draft picks as well as our 20 uh, undrafted free agents. Now, a lot of you are saying, okay, yeah, well, undrafted free agents. But don't poo-poo any of these guys. Um, keep in mind, although this wasn't really, he shouldn't have really been an undrafted free agent, but when you think of Lyle Collins, Lyle Collins went undrafted because of outside football circumstances that he was accused of that did not come to fruition. There, it turned out he had nothing to do with it and should have been drafted. But the Cowboys, of course, brought him in, and he has been a really good player for them. Um, Terrence Steele, of recent history, being an undrafted rookie, in fact, having gone through an offseason where there was no offseason in 2020, the beginning of COVID, being thrust into playing 13 games as a rookie, not that he started out real well. Not you know, at, at some points we thought of Chaz Green uh, ability, but kind of got his feet wet early and ended up playing better going down the stretch. And then, of course, last year after Lyle Collins had his uh, drug testing lack of there for taking the seven tests, getting suspended for six games, um, Terrence Steele ended up playing really, really well and solidified the right side. Um, I think the Cowboys did him a disservice when Tyron Smith went down. They had so much faith in him, they figured, oh, we'll just take him from the right, and we'll just put him to a left, a tackle's a tackle. And that kind of stunted the growth and things, and eventually Lyle Collins came in and Tyron Smith, and he ended up being on the bench. Well, he is solidified as the starter at right tackle right now, as far as we know. But when we look back in the history of the Dallas Cowboys, one of the things that the Dallas Cowboys have done really, really well is actually find some of these guys that have become great players. And to, to give you a, a taste of the top five that the Cowboys have had, and this is actually amazing when you think about this, um, the guys that they had that all the NFL passed on them. Mark Tune, who was instrumental in the three Super Bowls of the Great Wall of Dallas. Um, Mark Tune was a defensive tackle originally, backing up Randy White. Um, 
but they ended up switching him to the offset off offensive line because basically mm, we need help on the offensive line and he became the rock and so maybe in some regards maybe Terrence Steele will look back you know down the road here and think about you know Mark Tuane and then you know uh, Terrence Steele great undrafted offensive lineman that the Dallas Cowboys had of course uh, one guy who should be in the Hall of Fame, and it's a travesty that he's not, is Emerson Walls. Emerson Walls, believe it or not, out of Grambling University, was an undrafted rookie free agent um, and ended up being one of the greatest Cowboys that were out there. It's hard to think, hard to believe that somebody like that ended up not being drafted. Of course, um, recent Hall of Fame inductee cliff harris who i got to interview last year before the hall of fame induction ceremonies again part of captain crash um him and uh charlie waters two safeties that were unbelievable um for the dallas cowboys playing for 10 years in a different world altogether it's hard to believe that the company that he worked for the oil company actually said to him uh you have to make a choice you're either going to work for us or you're going to play football. And because he had been kind of injured a little bit and getting older, he was like, you know what? I work for you. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, Drew Pearson. Drew Pearson, another Hall of Famer for the Dallas Cowboys. Rookie, undrafted free agent. Listening to him and his story, how he literally stalked Roger Staubach to work out with him. And would not give up was tenacious in his desire to be a pro football player and eventually made it all the way to Canton. That's kind of amazing when you think about it, that again, one of our greatest wide receivers, the original 88, although technically he wasn't the first one to wear 88, but, and I still, I'm still messed up every time I see um, the Hail Mary. Because Drew talking about that orange that flew across the stream. Now, every time I see the damn clip, I'm looking for the orange and not the football and the catch. Thanks, Drew. I appreciate that. You know, messed it up. And, of course, there is the one, the only, Tony Romo, who Bill Parcells and Sean Payton found, kept on the bench for several years, grooming him and becoming one of the greatest Cowboys quarterbacks that's ever lived. And some of you will say that he deserves to be into the Hall of Fame. I'm not one that's saying that he's a Hall of Famer, but Tony Romo being undrafted. Cowboys have been very, very lucky at finding quarterbacks real late. Uh, interesting thing. I believe Roger Staubach was the 12th round quarterback. 12th round, I think. Tony Romo undrafted. Dak Prescott, fourth round. Cowboys have done well with late-round quarterbacks. And so you never know when you're going to find a diamond in the rough, and the Cowboys have actually been pretty good at taking guys that have um, very little pedigree or very little hype, even journeyman players, and making them good. Um, I wish that he had the desire that met the ability because a guy like a David Irving who was on a practice squad for Kansas city could have been a great, great player. Had he had the desire to be a great player and put in the work. So this week it'll be great because having all of these undrafted rookie free agents, and I believe 14 of the guys that we signed were in the pro football's top 100 undrafted rookie free agents so at least we have the cream of the crop at least in pro football focuses eyes if you believe in pro football focus um that they are some of the better free agents that are out there and so let's get, i just can't wait to get uh seeing these guys on the field and hope that we actually have some future hall of fames on this team um you know, John Ridgeway, oh, man, I love the guy. John Ridgeway is going to be a beast on the defensive line, and I'm looking for a whole lot. Uh, Sam, excuse me, formerly Sam, D. Williams, another guy that with the speed that he has going around the edge, he's going to be creating mismatched nightmares. And if the Cowboys can have some luck with injuries, forget about the Eagles 
thinking uh, that they're going to win this division. I think the Dallas Cowboys have a really good chance of doing it. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. The cake is still being baked. There may be some free agents out there that the Dallas Cowboys are looking for, and we'll have to wait and see if they actually end up signing any of them. With that being said, I hope I see you guys later tonight. And thank everybody who uh, – let, let me give a big shout-out here. On the Stuart Morrison um, GoFundMe house rebuild project that we're going to be doing uh we're over 800 dollars already let me give a shout out to kelly johnson who just did a uh, uh a um, donation fantasy hustler uh diane rivera joanne gonzalez stephanie sykes gina thorne uh katherine mariotta uh, mariotta um wayne zimmerman kathy stearns linda heatherman Shout out to all of you guys. We're still working on the game plan on exactly how we're going to do this, but what we're going to be doing is kind of, uh, I don't want to mess up with uh, copywriting, but there used to be a thing called Christmas in July where they end up having a lot of volunteers and stuff. I remember being part of one uh, many years ago in Alexandria um, where you go through and you have a bunch of volunteers that come through and they end up fixing up the house and stuff. I don't know how much we're going to be able to do, and how many people we're going to have, but I know that we're going to have some people that will definitely be there and to be part of it to try and do as much as we can for Stuart and his family. So with that being said, you know how we roll. It is time for me to get out of here and get back up to the workshop and um, get some more work done. And I hope to see you guys tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. Follow the Joker's Bullshit.